Hey guys, I'm on UK here. How are you doing? Hope you're all doing well. Um, this video is just a quick overview of me. Well, I won't say it's a quick overview because the video goes on for at least nine minutes long. It's just basically me um, showing you a quick showing of like each and every uh, little setup I've got going on for my ants. Um, majority of these setups are Laceus Flavus. Uh, I think Bonds, Laceus Niger. And I've got a Laceus Niger in the test tube, and then I've got two Flavus in two test tubes there. But I'm going to show you that I, uh, how I I've basically just, you'll just get to see how I feed them. Um, you'll also get to see me just doing a bit of cleaning on each of the setups. But um, yeah, so I basically, I'm going to show you how I cut my apple up. <laughs> Be careful when you're cutting apples, you're using sharp knives, you don't end up cutting your finger. But what I tend to do is I cut these into a small pieces, which then you'll see later in the video that I uh, feed my ants. Now, um, uh, what I do as well is I use um, toothpicks to help me remove any uh, leftover food from the nest. If the toothpick doesn't pick it up, then I obviously have to pick it up by hand. But the tin foil, I'd sometimes use the tin foil for two things. Um, tin foil can be used for either just putting all the old rubbish in and, you know, getting rid of it, or you can use the tin foil as a base plate. Uh, for putting your food on to feed the ants. So if you don't want your uh, ant nest getting dirty and horrible and yucky and you want a way of removing um, leftover food and you serve the food, serve it on a p small piece of tin foil and just put it into the nest and once they've finished eating it or they don't, they don't bother with it anymore you can simply remove um, the old food that's still on the, t on the tin foil sorry. And there you go, so it stays clean, but today I was going to use it originally for, you know, showing you guys that I use Tim Fall sometimes to put food on, but it's, uh, for some strange reason I wasn't thinking properly when I was making the video, I ended up using it for rubbish, <laughs> as you can see. <laughs> so, a bit silly of me, but yeah. Um, I'm Also, I check to see how the cotton wool is doing it in the bottle caps. If the cotton wool is dry or not that wet, remove them. Uh, from the nest and with well these are stuck down to the nest using some play-doh or some clay um, just keeps them in place because when you're moving the nest around you don't want them shaking and wobbling all over the place and everything moving it's just it's just a pain um, so yeah obviously I top this up with a bit of water and then I make sure with my finger that it's not too over full and it's just it, you know it's just soaked into the cotton you don't want it to be um, you don't want it to be overflowing or you know too deep for them because obviously ants can drown in it. I've experienced this in the past. I think it was one of the um, subscribers who mentioned in the comment section because I lost one of my laziest, um, laziest flavus workers who drowned in a bottle cap of water because I didn't put any cotton. And I think it was one of my um, subscribers who commented and recommended that next time I <laughs> give them water in a bottle cap, use some cotton wool and it works great they can literally just climb up uh, the side of the bottle cap walk on the cotton wool and you know drink the water without drowning it's um, so that's one done that was a Laceus flavus species that I've just finished there this is my Laceus neo niger oh sorry not neo niger what am I thinking this is my Laceus niger um, I always get confused sometimes between neo niger and niger weird um, yeah, so obviously I just do the same procedure again. I give them sort of clean them out, take out the old food, give them some fresh fruit or some fresh protein, um, top up the water if the water needs topping up, and yeah, the space, the basic maintenance of um, your ants, and it, it doesn't take too long. I think it took me a few minutes. Just to, it took me about nine minutes to do all these setups, so about less than ten minutes. Anyway, guys, um, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll let you just watch the rest of it. Um, it, it, I don't know if it's going to be boring or entertaining or anything, but um, I'll let you guys watch the rest of it. It's just me doing the same procedure for each setup, especially the test tubes. Test tubes are a bit different. For test tubes, cotton wool on the test tube plug, I dip in water so they can get some source of water because a lot of test tubes, after a long time, they run out of water source. So the best way to give them water is just dip the um, part that you plug, that you stop them from escaping, dip that part in some water put some fruits in there, put that back in, and then they've got a water supply and they've got a food supply. Do this every three, three, two to three days, maybe three to four, max, pushing it, 
three to four max and then yeah it keeps the colony going um, so they don't die anyway guys I'll let you watch the rest of the video I, uh, you know I need to stop chatting now <laughs> thanks for watching don't forget to like don't forget to comment don't forget to subscribe appreciate all the help you guys are giving me I appreciate all the support and I hope to see you on my next video thanks for watching